I was there in 1985 when Don Manning won the MVP. I was there when Don Mattingly won his MVP award in 1985. I was there when Don Mattingly had one of the greatest seasons ever, 1985. I was there in 1985 when Don Mattingly was the MVP that year. I try to play to the best of my ability, and if I can do that, I know I'm going to be happy, and I think everybody else will be too. He was a, he was a great leader. He was in... Uh, a person that went out there and, and played the game hard each and every day. He was probably one of my favorite players to watch. Playing against Donnie baseball was an absolute treat. Playing with him was even a bigger treat. Well, one of the hardest workers I've ever seen. I was a little apprehensive about coming over to the Yankees, but, but he was one of those guys that, that just made everybody feel comfortable, whether you were a rookie, whether you were a new guy, whether you were a veteran. Here's a guy who not only dedicated his life to the game that he loved so much, uh, but he dedicated his persona to the other members of the team. He was a team member and deservingly became captain. Don was, uh, you know, when he came up, he's such a hard work. They started working him out in the outfield, and he would take 100 balls at first base, then go to the outfield, take 100 balls. And watching Donnie play was just absolute joy. He always wanted to win. He always gave his best. He just, he just had a lot of respect from all the players. You know, I learned a lot from him, and he's just a gentleman of gentlemen. I played against him in Double A, Donnie. And we used to actually play him shaded to left field, and the guy had a hard time turning on the ball. You know, he came up to us. He, he wasn't known for home runs and things like that. He just hit. And all of a sudden, uh, I don't know what happened. Lou Pinella got a hold of him, taught him how to use his legs, and next thing you know, he's hitting balls in the upper deck in right field. All of a sudden, he got in the Yankee Stadium, and he just he just went up a whole another notch, a whole another level. You know, he had these routines in the clubhouse. He'd walk around the clubhouse, uh, walking sideways, like in his approach for about 20 minutes. You know, doing his approach in, in silence. And I, man, I wonder what he's thinking about. And he was another guy who put pictures and what they threw to him in the back of his head and he would remember things. Donnie could save games with his glove as well as win them with his bat. We were playing at home and we had a pretty good offensive day. I think Donnie had three of the hits and I'm walking out and he's on the extra hitting list and I'm like, I gotta go talk to him, find out why he's on the hitting list. And I walked up to him and said, Donnie, you killed the ball today. Why are you hitting early? He stood up and said, Jess, in my second at bat, third pitch, something didn't feel right. And then this is three hours later. I'm like, you gotta be kidding. So here's a guy that was in tune to everything about his swing. Watch him perform in 85 was just spectacular. I mean, the things that he did, the things that he could do. Donnie was uh, unbelievable that year. He just had everything going great. It was a phenomenal season. It seemed like everything was a line drive base hit. Donnie put up amazing numbers. Just to watch Donnie play in 1985 was, was a magical season for him, not only offensively, but defensively. To watch him perform throughout the year on my team. It was, it was most enjoyable just to watch him. He looked like he was just having fun every day. That he, there was no pressure. It was unreal, really. You know, he can hit any pitch. I saw him driving 145 runs um, and hit 35 home runs. Most amazing season I'd seen anybody put together. He could pull the ball, drive the ball the other way, hit home runs. If you need a double, he gets you a double. If you needed a long ball, he could do that. Anything you wanted him to do, anything that needed to be done when he was hitting, he did. If you needed a single, he got it. If you needed a two base hit, he got it. The guy hit for average, he did everything offensively that he possibly do. You know, and he'd pop home run when you weren't expecting it. But just watching him hit was something. And he drills it to right field, his second hit of the game. Randolph scores, and it's now 5-2 to two Yankees. That's his 200th hit. I thought I had a chance to win the MVP voted, but 
at the end of the second half, he got hot and uh, he started driving me in every time I reached the base. He put it all together and uh, his, all his hard work paid off. I can't imagine anybody putting a, a better season together than Donnie did. Well, there was probably no better and well-deserved MVP than, than uh, Don Mattingly. I feel good for the city of New York, I really do. It seems like every time I get to come back three or four times uh, since the season was over, that's all, that's all I want to talk about is the MVP, 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 in the same way in my hometown, Evansville, but not quite uh, the emphasis, I don't think. And uh, here, I, it seemed like the city was involved, and it seemed like the city would have been disappointed if I didn't win, and, uh, and, and that was kind of neat. He doesn't get as much credit for his defense. I mean, everybody always thought about the, you know, the home runs and the doubles and the average, but he was a phenomenal first base. Watching him play first base was something. I've also seen Donnie alter where a guy should be bunting. They won't bunt to him. They bunt to third because Donnie, he can come in, field it, throw to third base with the best of them. I was eventually uh, the recipient of two gold gloves, and without Don Mattingly, I don't think that that would have been possible. They were talking about best first baseman. To me, you have to add Don Mattingly to that list. He was one of the best first basemen I've ever seen. He was a great player, great hitter, just an all-around player. You know, I tip my hat to Don Manning because he was a fantastic player. He was a great player. He's, he's one of those guys on the team that's the classic, classic gentleman. He was just a joy to watch. He never, you know, took time off. He always worked hard at his position. I learned a lot behind Don Manning and the way he carried himself for us in playing the game. He showed who he was by how he went about his business on the baseball field. No one deserved it better, no one loved him better than, uh, than uh, me and my staff and his, and his teammates, obviously. So it was, it was a tremendous thing for him. A great friend of mine, and, and uh, I couldn't ask for a better player to get behind him. One of the magic seasons of all time, 1985 for Donnie Baseball.